Right. Um, first of all, uh, we start with a, a quick slice on, on Turkey, some of the background, because this is about a case study applying the findings from the World Bank Logistics Performance Index, broad indicators to Turkey, and to understand better what does this LPI actually uh, tell, and to, to look further in details inside the country, uh, how well does it fit the, the actual uh, situation on the ground. But maybe, Dilan, you will say a few words about Turkey first. Thank you, Lori. Uh, yes, for the ones who does know where Turkey is, well, it is located no in Turquia, between, more or less, we can say, uh, Asia, uh, Europe, Asia and Europa. Africa, so it's geographically es very much uh, suitable for such a case study for being in between the uh, major transportation uh, roads or ju just uh, lines, it and also it's an upper middle grandes. income country es with a growing GDP. Yeah. Uh, so we, with the uh, increasing uh, foreign yeah. trade, uh, you can see Tenemos that in the last couple of 10 years after uh, mainly, uh, just a uh, map point here, yeah. uh, here you, you see the uh, agreement with the European Union, custom, customs union with the European Union. Uh, the foreign trade has increased Entonces tremendously almost five times uh, just in the last couple of 10 years. So it also constitutes a good uh, case study Entonces for us because we are investigating the, the logistics performance index and este since it's a kind of a statistical measure, maybe Laurie can explain you better later, uh, the, the confidence intervals of the, this measure for, for Turkish, uh, Turkey's performance is uh, quite small, so which makes, uh, which gives us more reliable uh, just uh, data on Entonces logistics performance. Very good. And uh, now that we are here in Mexico, Mexico has a population of about 120 million people. Turkey has uh, close to 80 million people. So there are uh, also, in that sense, a few uh, resemblances, a similar type of uh, order of magnitude of countries uh, in, in that sense. So what, what we have done here was actually um, initiated by, by the Turkish government partly and done under the auspices of International Transport Forum uh, over the past uh, nine, ten months. We spent uh, uh, a couple of weeks or, or two weeks in, in, in uh, and delay, of course, she comes from, from Turkey and knows the country, but we, we spent some time in having extensive interviews with stakeholders in Turkey, looking at uh, those broad uh, areas that also the Logistics Performance Index is covering, mainly the customs and border agencies, meaning that how easy or difficult it is to, to organize trade logistics to and from uh, the country, what is the <coughs> level, of <coughs> excuse me, level of transport and uh, also telecommunications infrastructure and services in a country used for transport and, and trade and logistics, how easy or difficult it is to arrange shipments to and from countries, meaning capacity, affordable capacity to and from the country. Not looking at specific modes no we di in this uh, LPI international comparison, we did not have eh, questions este and do not have questions on how would you rate the road transport, how would you rate the rail transport with no more broader based uh, gauge. Quality of logistic services you find in the country, uh, reliability issue covered by a question of, of timeliness and how easy or difficult it is to track and trace. And uh, this is now the fourth. Uh, edition of the LPI. The first one was published 2007, and this was released almost exactly a year ago, or 11 months ago, roughly. Uh, this is a worldwide survey among freight forwarding logistics people. And uh, this also means that when we address and have uh, approached the freight forwarding people, the findings are more applicable to manufactured uh, unitized type of transport than, let's say, for example, bulk transport of iron ore or oil, crude oil, because there you don't usually have freight forwarding people as middlemen. You have other ship brokers or, or you have some closed-loop industrial arrangements. But here we have freight forwarders. It's more like a manufactured uh, value-added, uh, higher value-added type of goods. And um, this is just a quick snapshot from these, uh, along these four editions of the LPI 2007, 2010, 12, and 14. Uh, this just gives a, a quick idea 
of the uh, change of Turkey's uh, course along those six dimensions. And these six dimensions are the ones we use in the international LPI, when also countries are compared each, each to each other and, and, and their rankings are, are produced. Broadly speaking, you can, you can say that uh, Turkey, if you start from the rank, uh, has been uh, among the uh, rank 30 out of 150 or 160 countries most recently. So it is in the top fifth, if you like, of the countries that we have measured worldwide. It has also shown quite, uh, quite some improvement in how customs and border agencies uh, are performing and also how easy or difficult it is track to tra track and trace shipments and also the quality of transport logistics services has been increasing. Generally speaking, also that of transport uh, related infrastructure. There has been some downward uh, uh, ratings or scores for También timeliness and uh, ease of arranging affordable shipments, ha but generally speaking, Turkey is performing uh, in the top uh, fifth of the countries all along. And um, when we look at the macro data and compare it with the, with the world trade data, even though this is not a causality that we are advocating, but, but we find that uh, if you would take any country uh, that could increase its uh, logistics performance index score by 10%, not the rank, but the score by 10%, that would mean that uh, comparing with the world trade data, it would uh, uh, correlate with a 69% with a of increase in, in exports for that country. And for every 10% increase in the LPI score for importers or imports, you have a 50-plus, 54% increase. I stress this is not a causality, but there is a strong uh, indication, as Jan was, was into, with some other uh, human development index or, or percep corruption perception index, that uh, how well and how easy countries are to organize trade logistics is significant how much they are engaged in world trade. We also used a set of uh, comparator countries. These are only a few of those in these uh, couple of slides. Uh, comparator countries similar uh, by income group or ge geography or, or otherwise relevant trading partners for Turkey. Malaysia was chosen as one of the comparators because it is also in the upper middle income class. Uh, and actually the top in that income group where Turkey comes uh, second. And if you take a look at the overall LPI score, Turkey is uh, not very far from the high-income OECD uh, average. Germany came as the number one country in the 2014 LPI. Um, it also did so uh, four years ago. But if you compare it with the si World Bank Group, Europe and Central Asia, Turkey is performing clearly Europa better. Now Central, I have to say Turquia that the Europe and Central Asia is excluding European Union. That's the country region, country region uh, which does not have European Union, but it has the non-EU countries and Central Asia as a comparator. Este estudio, los no son if you look at Europea, the uh, 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 logistic Central. performance index with Turkey and, and Malaysia, si, si este if Turkey, Turkey Malasia, just statistically speaking, would reach the same level of si, Malaysia, that si might Turquia be nivel de Malasia, leading to an increase in imports and exports by 14 to 18 percent respectively, if that would be the, the, the leading, uh, uh, leading indicator there. So there is a, also a very, uh, very ambitious uh, expansion plan of Turkish exports that today are slightly under 180 million, uh, sorry, 180 billion American dollars or 170 billion perhaps now to expand it to 500 billion dollars by 2023. So to make it almost, almost three times uh, higher in less than 10 years very ambitious plan. If you look at the uh, logistics competence issues, uh, there again, Turkey, if that would be reaching the level of Germany, 
would mean a significant increase in exports, something that Turkey is, is uh, uh, planning to, to materialize in the next 10 years or so. Now the policy actions that we try, try to understand better during the field work and interviews, quite significant number of interviews with key stakeholders, both in industry, trade, logistics and government, uh, to understand how do these six dimensions in the LPI uh, work in towards the policy actions that have been planned and are being implemented uh, in Turkey? Also understanding the qualitative and quantitative aspects uh, to it. So, should I turn over now to you, Dilai? Yes, uh, as Laurie, uh, Laurie just uh, said, uh, well, we didn't look at no the typical judges, just, uh, we didn't make a typical analysis no uh, focusing on different transportation modes, but since the countries are more and more concerned about the LPI score, and Turkey has already put uh, target uh, score levels in the coming Turkey years, so we wanted to have a, a just more holistic este understanding este of the transportation modes, so we picked up the different LPI uh, the sub-dimensions and try to understand uh, the, the motives or just uh, uh, what's going on behind uh, the, this performance figures, the trend in this performance figures. So first of all, for example, we can start. Uh, I'm, uh, first, uh, I'm just going to summarize our findings here. Just, uh, in the paper, you can just find more extensive analysis, but for the presentation, for, for keeping it short and just to keep the, the time uh, constraints, I will keep it shortly, just present to you some key findings on Entonces, this issues. For the customs and border management tolerance, you can see that Turkey has uh, just improved uh, very well after uh, 2010, even though it's still one of the two lagging components of Turkey. And just, uh, you can consider as a kind of a basic measure, performance measure for the clearance times, customs clearance times as the average uh, border clearance times, for example. But if you observe in the quantitative measures of Turkey's uh, uh, clearance times, on the average, we in don't see that much of a change. So the average numbers, even though the average no numbers of the clearance cambio. times are more or less the same, uh, just you can see that the variability of the clearance times Podemos has uh, just decreased de tremendously. So this is, I'm going back again, just uh, this, you can see that here in 2000, after 2010, there has been a uh, huge increase, and which might be really related to the, the, the decrease in the variability after 2010, you can observe. And how this was managed in means of policy actions, you can see that uh, just about 100%, uh, just all of the customs transactions has been computerized in these years, in this last couple of years, and uh, just uh, more and more public private uh, 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 cooperation models uh, have been uh, implemented, and uh, just uh, more than 2,000 billion uh, US dollars have been invested, uh, invested 200 million. Uh, US dollars Those have been invested for modernization of the border gates in Turkey. Para las en and Turkey. another measure, if you Otra look at the, the infrastructure, uh, uh, just the trend of infrastructure, you can see that there is again a uh, significant increase uh, after 2010 to 2012, uh, but there's a slight decrease in 2014. So, of course, the work uh, just doesn't directly Entonces just show uh, no just the investment on the, 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 the one type of uh, just transportation mode. But de, de by chance or coincidence, you might say, but we find it interesting that, well, this figure is actually repeated in this figure, which shows you the road investment figura. as a percentage of GDP in Turkey. So uh, the percentage of road investment has been doubled in the last five years. Uh, uh, and this is the road, uh, the, uh, transport is the, the major uh, mode of transportation, mainly in the domestic uh, 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 shipments. And also it takes a huge share in international shipments as well, much higher than Europe, as you can see in this figure. But of course, this has some drawbacks. It is not uh, so just related uh, to. So we see here, sorry, before I continue there, uh, as we see here, the just uh, the, uh, this is not, as discussed in the previous uh, session, uh, this is not just a road investment. 
Uh, this is the, the investment in the Est major transportation mode, which has been mostly used by the international in freight forwarders. So for a different country, uh, this might be a different transportation mode as well. Entonces, país, haber otro modo and to say that as a kind of a drawback of this uh, highly dominant road uh, transportation uh, structure, uh, the, the costs of transportation is very high, so according to the study which is done by the international uh, in logistics body of the International Exporters Association, the diesel fuel accounts almost 60% of the total freight costs for the logistics providers in Turkey in the logistics in industry. And in more than and in, in means of the interim model, uh, just model, uh, just balance, Turkey is below the average, so Turkey more than 90% of the semi trailers are not craneable. Uh, to and it cannot be used in internal model trains. So Más the, the connection from no road transport to uh, just uh, other modes of transportation is very difficult in Turkey. As a result of that, you can see immediately on the LPI that Turkey falls below its peer group of countries. So in means of ease of arranging competitive price shipments, uh, Turkey just lags uh, behind the, the, uh, other, uh, as we the competitive countries in the region are maybe the benchmarks. And in terms region. of quality of logistics services, so you can see that there is again an increase in the uh, quality, calidad, which is mostly again uh, determined by the, the strong private sector uh, in Turkey. In the last couple of years, the uh, foreign investment has been uh, increased by incentives and just lowering the entry uh, barriers in the market. So most of the international players in the, the market are now started uh, just uh, operating in Turkey. So also the Turkish logistics providers, they, they got bigger and they started using the economies of scale for increasing their operational efficiency. So as a result, the quality of the services with the increased competition has increased. Uh, this can be also observed in, again, the, the domestic logistics performance index indicators. The, this uh, graphic shows us uh, the uh, competence and quality of logistics services, the percentage of respondents saying high or very high in different terms. And you can see that Turkey is even higher, just, uh, just better than the average UMI, and even doing better than the Malaysia, which is also the, the top performer in the upper middle income countries. And in terms of ability of tracking and tracing uh, consignments, uh, Turkey is again uh, above uh, this uh, just peer group and is just performing better than its peer group of countries. And this is mainly related to uh, just the conversion of all these operational uh, activities, logistics activities, and just tracking them and use of. Uh, 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 computerized systems and uh, co computer information systems. De, de so this is a result of our survey just we done, we conducted before uh, we've done all these focus group meetings with Hemos the experts. So you can see that just, uh, most people just who has taken part, most experts who has taken part in the service at that well. In this last uh, two years, the, uh, there is an increased utilization of computerized border clearance systems or e-governance services, and finally, just I would like to show Finalmente you just two uh, just declining trends, which is uh, in timeliness of shipments abajo, and ease of arranging shipments, which is the price and the timeliness, which more or less you can uh, see that are correlated because of this uh, just delays which might happen in the, the borders. So last uh, year, after 2012 and to, uh, between 2012 and 14, you might have heard about all these political uh, just, uh, conflicts around Turkey and the war in Syria and the, the, the uh, Middle East, the, 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 the uh, political disputes in the Middle East. So for some time after in the, the, the late 2013, 
the Syrian border was completely closed, for Entonces, example, which has stopped all the traffic, all the trade traffic in that border. border. And also, that there has been some political conflict with the, the European border, with uh, Bulgaria and Romania, so which has uh, just uh, converted the Turkish companies to look for alternative roads for reaching Europe. And then, uh, because of the kind of, kind of congestion on these roads, uh, that there have been the, the Turkish uh, trucks tend to have long waiting times which might even go up to four, y six days just waiting for the roller lines. Uh, just as a clarification, this roller line is a, is a specific term for uh, uh, coming from the German words uh, rollen de Landstraßen, meaning it's, uh, it's, uh, just piggyback uh, trucks or trailers on, on uh, rail, uh, especially through uh, Austria, uh, typically on the Slovenia, Italian connections or to Austria. Austria so Alemania this is what it, mean, what it means. Yes, 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 I actually finished, Laurie, you can continue. Bueno, yo ya terminé, tú uh, thank you. So there are some issues, of course, uh, of, of uh, uh, regional or local, local uh, <coughs> character, but the exercise was actually, uh, the purpose of this exercise was to take the LPI findings as a starting point and to understand better what lies behind these figures. That, that's why we also call this exercise behind the LPI uh, on Turkey. Uh, just coming back to those uh, scores and numerical uh, indicators, um, each one of those six dimensions actually was uh, rated in a, on a score from one, the lowest, to five, which is the maximum. So if you are somewhere 3.9 or 3.4, you are already at very relatively high score levels. And an additional thing that I would like to add is that when we use these, uh, um, I'm saying we because I'm, I'm one of the co-authors of this LPI report, as, as many of you, you might know, uh, when, for example, Turkey, or Finland, or Mexico, or Germany is evaluated and compared in these international ratings. All these uh, ratings come from outside that particular country. So the respondents who are rating Germany, or Mexico, or Turkey are, are from outside that country. It is also important to realize that this is more like an external freight forwarding specialist uh, professionals uh, son, son como aggregate uh, que perception that is uh, condensed no into these figures rather than being just the Turkish respondents rating Turkey, which we have on the domestic side on some more numerical things. But this interna international comparison is coming from outside each country. Coming back to the país. findings uh, we, we, we had here, so typically on the border crossing activities, the, uh, reducing the variability of waiting times or clearance times is, uh, is over, a, I mean, it's a global issue and internationally uh, uh, documented that it is one of the important uh, aspects to make transport more predictable. And I think it was also in Alan's paper that uh, uh, underlined the uh, knock-on effects or the bullwhip effects or in different ways. So if you have a lot of uncertainty at one stage or one node of supply chains, it easily and typically multiplies in the way that you, for example, traders and companies have to keep uh, much higher inventories to be able to cope with the situations. And in that, that way, the um, inventory running costs and all, all related costs may be multiplied. And I'm not referring to this uh, whiskey type of production in Scotland here, but generally speaking, this is a, this is a big issue. And I, I think this is something where Turkey has been uh, quite successful in reducing this variability in border crossings. Another finding which is more general to the uh, LPI as well, but has some bearing to, to Turkey as well, is that um, when we talk about customs and customs clearance, border crossing times, it is very often not the customs administration as such, which is the main culprit or the main bottleneck. It is very often the other border agencies, be they veterinary or phytosanitary or some standardization agencies. And in particular, it is the cooperation between these different agencies that is uh, often key. This is very much the picture in, in much uh, large part of Latin America, if, if, if we have understood it correctly. It's a very much the picture in Africa, parts of Europe, 
Asia in as well. Africa, so the interagency cooperation is, is also Entonces, vital la, from la the policy making point of view. Also, understanding the second uh, bullet point here, the capacity management. Uh, meaning that, uh, especially for those uh, nodes in the transport network that, that uh, can create bottlenecks due to service uh, issues like border crossing points where you have a service element uh, in passing through, it is also important to understand what sort of investments do you really need to, to cope with the, with the normal flow of passengers in, 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 in on one side and of cargo on the other, and how can you cope with the peak moments uh, be that within the week, within the month, period of the year, or so forth. Uh, of course, if everybody builds every infrastructure for the peak demand, it will be uh, extremely expensive, and this is, of course, not what is, what is meant by this, but to understand it better, how to dimension the infrastructure needs to the, to the fluctuation and also the top demand. Um, it also came very strongly from the findings that um, once you uh, create uh, and establish and maintain also uh, good transport infrastructure, it is, a, it is a platform and a basis on which you can then have a reliable, high quality services. But of course, transport infrastructure in many cases is just the necessary condition uh, to, to have a, have a well-performing logistics, but it, it is not the defining conditions, uh, condition of, of doing so. And as was mentioned in one of the comments in the, in the morning, earlier morning, uh, countries at different stages of development have different needs in terms of basic transport infrastructure to get it in, on, in place and then moving forward to more advanced uh, business environments where, where the service uh, offerings and the uh, become more important if you are in a high-income country. Infrastructure typically already, to a great extent, is there, but how do you, how do you provide the services on top of that? The infrastructure becomes much more, relatively speaking, much more important than building an additional road link between two places or additional expansion of a particular terminal. Finally, it was a, uh, very clearly, clearly seen in Turkey that um, the private sector, both in uh, manufacturing and trading businesses and, and, and also in uh, the private sector in providing logistic services, has uh, developed tremendously over the past 10, 15, 15 years in Turkey. Uh, we also saw the very high increase of, of Turkish exports uh, starting from around 2001 and 2002 when the agreement with, with the European Union was signed, which was one of the big boosters of, of, of Turkish exports and also economic growth as such. Uh, the private sector is a thriving private sector is, is one of the key factors in providing also high logistic, high quality logistic services. Coming slightly back to what Jan was also referring to with this chicken and egg problem, uh, in a way, which one comes first and, and uh, I mean, Turkey is also a case where this very rapid economic growth and in particular rapid export growth has also mandated that the logistics sector has had to develop very quickly, both through uh, foreign direct investment, uh, non, uh, companies from outside Turkey establishing their activities in Turkey, but also domestic companies being able to, to uh, quite quickly come up with the uh, with the uh, with the situation and, and provide start to provide services that are high quality, good sort of a good quality price quality ratio services. But having this is, is really one of the key things, and I think Turkey is a good case where you can really show that this has gone in tandem with the economic growth and the, the how the private sector has has grown, both in the manufacturing trading side and the logistics uh, side as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think this uh, Entonces, basically concludes our presentation, and we are ready to take comments and questions.